The auction's over. How many horses did we rescue tonight? 17. And we did rescue 17. And I was walking back from the office after paying for it, and I was able to rescue another one. So we rescued 18 Ooh. horses That's tonight. Awesome. And then Ponytails was able to get four. So 22 that was horses. A good, good trip. That was a good trip. When we get all the horses back from the auction, they're unloaded, they're sorted into different categories, basically the most critical ones, and then kind of following down from there. So we have our veterinarian here, she's evaluating them all. If she finds a horse that does have a poor quality of life, that will be examined. If it's a horse that is currently suffering and there's no hope of re recovery, we will be giving horses last act of kindness if they need it. So when horses arrive, they are given B12, antibiotics, um, there's kind of a list. We'll have different organizations come over and stand here and watch the process up close and personal. And then we'll kind of switch out. So we'll kind of just observe if you have questions, um, just find your personal mentor, which is me. Um, and if you don't can't find your personal mentor, you can still ask me. So, um, and if it starts to rain, just, just step in. That's more promising. What is it, Sophie? Okay, so wait till it's, it's says it's ready. Idle. Yep, so just give it a second. Are we taking another one? No, 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 no. Okay, so just, now it's ready. Okay, let's try again. Excuse me. Is that a loose? So let's go ahead and put this mare in a stall. Our x-ray machine is having some serious technical difficulties. Seems like it's reoccurring. Um, so we're gonna charge it up, see if that does anything. Try again later. Yeah, we have this Belgian mare. She's not that old. She's extremely painful in all four of her feet. Most significantly, her left front. She's got an abscess tract that extends from a pretty large hole in her sole all the way up through her coronary band that looks pretty old. It smells um, pretty significantly infected. She got some pain meds this morning, but her heart rate was still elevated, so we gave her some more intravenous pain meds. And unfortunately, our um, digital radiograph system is sending us some error codes. Can you, can you do a test? Because this is a different color So now. we're troubleshooting that because we really need to know what's going on radiographically to make some decisions about this mirror. So we put her in a stall for just a second. I'm going to get her foot cleaned and wrapped, and hopefully we'll have the diagnostic equipment up and running again soon. Is there something I can shoot to test because I've now made it a different color yeah. like the other ones that were working? Yep. What am I missing? Ah, ah, push, push. Push? Push. A miss? Push. Oh, like that. Okay. Wow. Well, like push, push. Like I got it now. <laughs> push. Thanks. Can I Come on, guys. 
There you go. Whoa, close that gate. Okay. Hey. Need another dog? Come on. I can ask my I know, it's a big jump. You got this. <laughs> Nicely done. Nicely done. Very graceful. Oh, oh. <clears throat> you don't know the other side? Other side, other side. Uh oh. Don't worry about it. Jason's down there, I'm pretty sure. Need someone over here. I'm almost speechless. We don't have horses get loose. And that's the second one in as many minutes. And it's like, it's not happening anymore. So. Hopefully somebody will actually watch the gate and make sure horses aren't running for freedom. We're getting the horses unloaded. One of the little ponies decided she didn't want to be weighed or he didn't want to be weighed. So he took off, but we got him back in there. Um, so we're just trying to get everyone unloaded right now. It's been a really long, long day. Yesterday was really long, but the horses are here. We're going to get them help and we're excited to have all these organizations here to see our process. So at auction, they said that she was she was human aggressive and animal aggressive, but we really didn't see any signs of aggression. Um, and I mean, she's in the shoot. There's really no way to tell if she's actually being aggressive. She's just not a fan of what we're doing. So we'll get her out, do our pictures, and we'll see kind of how she is, but we're gonna do it as safe as possible. Auction intake is going great. Um, I've learned so much from watching everybody and, and finding out exactly what the vet and vet tech is doing. And it's a different variety of horses that have gone in here. And each horse has had a different issue. And so it's just great to find out that every horse has been able to be taken care of. And so the auction tag number, is that something you guys make up or is that from the auction? This is from the auction. So, and then when we're doing it, we have our number mm -hmm. and that's the auction number that they came with. So how do you come up with your number? Random? It goes down the sheet. So we okay. start at number one at the beginning of the year. And that means that we are about to take in 356 for the okay. year, number 356. So we just go from the top down. Okay. And the letters one, for three. the 20. The Z is just for this year, yeah, okay. to differentiate. So it, that matches with thoroughbreds, I believe. So you the, get thoroughbreds No, it, what it is is the thoroughbred registry. I think it's thoroughbreds, yeah, isn't it thoroughbreds? Yeah. Yeah. They do a, yeah. a Z for a year, registry. like every letter is a year. So they right. recycle their letters every 26 years. If you can't right. tell the difference between a 27 year old and a one year old, you shouldn't be in horses, yeah. right? So, um, so we just match that up to the thoroughbred numbers. Okay. Yeah. So do you guys just take a picture of the number with the horse or do you actually put the tag on the horse? So we do both. We take okay. a picture, so we'll hold the picture, we'll hold this by the horse and we get pictures of it. We'll get them with and without for the Coggins photos. And then we'll put the number on this tag and then the tag will go um, with a zip line, a zip line, zip tie. Zip tie, we're not zip lining today. The zip tie goes through here and then you just put it through. We have some octopus. Blue to help hold it in, and then um, we just put that on the horse so that we have through the uh, mane, right? You're not through a, the mane. Yeah, yes. you put a knot in the mane. Not through the horse, through, through the mane, blue. and um, it helps it hold it there so we can recognize who they are. After a while, we know each horse, and but sometimes you'll get horses that look exactly alike, and you're like, who is that? 
We have tried so many ways to identify horses in the pasture, from literal metal, metal clamps in their manes to just so many different ways. And the method that Angela just described is the one that we find works the best. They're usually on there after a week or two, even a month or two, and it's just a great way to identify your horse quickly in a pasture setting. Basically, we let the medical team do what the medical team needs to do. They have a system in place, and we let them do their job. Um, they're looking for any health problems, any pain. Um, you know, they're aging the horses, they're pulling Coggins. The auction does do Coggins, but it can take a while for us to get those Coggins back. So we pull them again. We do digital Coggins here. Um, they're all given antibiotics because we've been exposed to a lot of different things. And everything that the veterinarian is saying is being written down for that horse's file. So we know everything on intake and we're trying to be as thorough as possible so we can actually not miss some serious medical condition of maybe this horse came to the auction because of this problem. So far the process has gone good and um, really uh, impressed that they have their own x-ray machine that makes it so much easier to actually be able to see what is truly going on and so that is a great benefit to have when you do an auction intake and but other than that I think it's running pretty, pretty smoothly we're going through the horses and everybody's getting what they need. So this is my second time at Horse Plus I was here last year for the mentorship um, and while I've seen everything, um, there's always new things that are being learned. Um, there's never just one thing that's the same consistently. It's always different. So um, even coming back out here a second time, um, it was like a brand new learning experience all over again. We absolutely use our padded Mustang squeeze chute. We absolutely love this machine. I know Alicia would really love to see how it works because they would like one too. What it is, is it's specifically designed to safely handle untrained, just completely wild horses. You can squeeze them, you can tilt them, it's padded, the horses never hurt. And a lot of horses actually get calm when they're in it because they feel that they're in an enclosed space and they're safe. So it is a wonderful piece of machinery, but we never want to put a horse in there if we don't need to. We step over this way so we can uh, make more room. This is our padded BLM squeeze shoe. So it's not made by the BLM, it's actually made in Oklahoma, but every part basically of the shoe we can open up and access a horse. Um, yeah, their to feet. Work on their feet. Now it will lay down and tilt. Right. So we can work on their feet, which I know would be a huge... Yes, that's what we really need. And then... And that opens in sections top and bottom. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. The entire door will open up. Yeah. This is what we need. That, that is what you This need. is on our yes. wish list. Very handy. <laughs> yes. Right now, they're bringing more horses up. Um, and these are all horses that we will be bringing through the scales. We take an intake weight on them so we know how their progress is doing. So. The medical team will come up and weigh them about every other week to track their progress and see is this is this horse improving is it not if it's not why because a, a healthy horse that you know is just skinny it doesn't have a medical problem it should be gaining weight consistently if we see a leg in the health of this horse um, there may be a problem and that's when the veterinarian and the medical team need to dive in deeper a horse like this is an excellent candidate to be spayed. So a spaying mare procedure it could be as cheap as like $300 up to $1,200. So it just really depends on your veterinarian. But the more that veterinarians do it, the more affordable it will become. Because right now it's very much a specialty thing that not a lot of people think of. But if she's hormonal and she's cranky and she was spayed, her hormones would go down and then she would be more like a gelding. So that could really help her out. A lot of times mares that are really grouchy are grouchy because they are having problems. And if we can remove those female problems for them, they can be much happier horses. We are actually gonna be flying a veterinarian down here to work with our medical team. And we're gonna do about 20 mares in one day. 
So once we get that program launched, we hope that we can be spaying all of our mares. We'd be bringing this veterinarian to our facility that knows how to do the procedure and getting him to train our medical technician so, and veterinarian. If you want to send your vet out here, they could all work together. He says it's a pretty easy procedure once you learn how, and it's not a huge invasive surgery. Yeah, and you're doing it in field here at the facility. In stocks. In stocks. Yes. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yes, we send Alyssa. Oh, we will be sending yeah. Alyssa. Yes. <laughs> when you need he, he says as long as you can have stocks, you can spay mares. Oh, really? Yeah, that red man's got out. What? Oh, yeah. Spicy. So, what happened? So, I guess they managed to let themselves out three times. Number three horse got out, and four, yeah. five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and thirteen. So, almost every horse has gotten back out. So, we're going to put a stop to that anytime we decide to close the gate. Not the draft. The draft is like shockingly young. Yeah, like I would say eight to ten. Yeah. yeah. Can we take her out? I want to do a really thorough dental exam. So we're going to step over here to watch this exam. So this mare has probably choked badly in the past. Betty, go poke. You're all right. I know. Keith, can you open this up to give us more room? Yes. So I haven't actually really anesthetized her. I just kind of gave her a sedate. I'm going to start with doing a really thorough dental exam. Is going to be big enough. You can bring these. So I don't know if you can try to get your camera up here. This is a great example of why you got to have the speculum. So the right side is treatable. The left side, we have complete loss of the upper arcade. Yeah. So Tani, if you, if you can see up here. On the upper left arcade, we've got first premolar looks good, but then we have a cavity where we're all the way down to gum line on the whole part of that arcade. Um, and then <laughs> the bottom left is also worn down to gum line. So I'm not going to float this horse's hey, teeth. Have, Jenna, that mare has no occlusal surfaces, upper or lower right. So. Um, I would still like to get radiographs to confirm if we have rotation, but unfortunately, even if we float the right side of her mouth, I think her ability to gain weight at, she's over 30, I don't know how old she is. But see, it should be at 100%, because it's been like plugged in a plenty. Everything else is fully charged. All right, everyone pray really hard. Jason touched it, so it's probably fixed. Now. Jason touched it. Would you like to operate the generator and have me hold the plane? Sure. Okay. So, like, what if it's me? You mean, what if it's me? Because what if I just got a filter? Oh, yeah, we've got. It. I don't know if you guys can all see this. So, this is this yeah. poor pony's um, oh. left front foot and yeah. You can see we have severe rotation of the hoof capsule, and then we have a fracture of the coffin bone in the back and some more remodeling over there. So that's really severe. Um, this pony's probably foundered over and over again and probably has a lot of discomfort. So even with appropriate hoof care, unfortunately, I don't think that's resolvable. So a little pony with a severely foundered, I mean, the coffin bone's gone. The vet is gonna give her the last act of kindness. She is gonna put her under anesthesia first and then do the intrathecal lidocaine euthanasia. When the lidocaine is injected, it literally goes over her 
her brain and it'll bathe her brain in lidocaine and it just shuts all the little nerve ending, everything that's going on in the brain just goes to sleep when that lidocaine covers it. Um, so this is one of, uh, it's a great method of euthanasia. It's an AAP approved method of euthanasia. It's one we use here a lot. Um, and so you'll be able to watch the process. It's always sad, but if you noticed, as soon as we knew that she was going to be euthanized, we put her out there on the grass because that's the happiest place for her. Um, so that will be her, her last memories of being able to eat grass and have, you know, people around her. And then she will, she'll go under as if she was having a surgery. And then um, the lidocaine will be injected. So you're welcome to go love on her real, you know, I mean, before the vet puts her under anesthesia. Um, if we hadn't have rescued her, where would she be? I mean, it's the hard, hard part of rescue. But we have to look at the big picture and say, we're doing it because her owners were totally unresponsible and they walked away from that decision and now we're stepping into it. And yes, somebody might bash us on the internet because we euthanized the pony, but they're not here seeing the x-rays, the shape of her hooves, that she has all these dental problems and she's in her 30s. And that's something that her owner should have done a long time ago and they didn't. So this uh, first one is xylazine, and that's just going to give her a nice, nice uh, sleepiness. sleepiness. It's the anesthesia pre-med. Are you all using this form of euthanasia up at your facility? We did that at the I know we did it at the, the but not, con not consistently. So it must be Colorado. Yeah. I can say that it's a very different clinical experience. So I've been fortunate to do it a, a bunch of times with the veterinarian who's worked here at Horse Plus for the whole time since they moved here. Um, and it, it's a learning curve, but I think it is very humane. And so that was the one that's gonna make her, her go down. Tani, I'll be right back. Are you guys coming? Hey, we're good. This we're good. So she doesn't have many teeth in her and she, she really wanted to eat grass. So we let her come out here and eat grass for a while. And so, um, all right, let her, let her go down. Yeah, thank you. So this would just be like, just like, I mean, how many of us have seen gelding operations? This is very normal procedure. And we're gonna just wait until she is completely out as if we could do a surgery on her and then the vet's going to come in with a larger needle and um, basically when she gets spinal fluid spinal fluid will be replaced with lidocaine and then that will just shut her brain off her teeth are so long i know so this is the important part is is making sure that she's truly under anesthesia and has no palpebral response, which she doesn't. So she's fully anesthetized. That's the really critical part for me as a clinician because she is fully, completely unconscious at this stage. You okay with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it. I just spoke the atlas and it's mm. So again, she did move because like, I got an epidural when I was having my kid and I jerked too when they went through. I mean, happened. So then, there is spinal fluid leaking out through here, dripping out, and that's what your vet wants to see. And we just wait a, just a couple seconds to let some of the cerebrospinal fluid drain. So with this method, the Physiology behind it is very different from if your vet comes out and uses euthanasia solution. Um, and so our verification of the heartbeat stopping takes a lot longer, not a lot longer, but more than a couple minutes sometimes with these guys and that's acceptable. So we just keep an eye on them. This is such a cute pony.
you know some kid loved this mm -hmm. pony for years. Yeah, for years. Yeah. If we can go to the auction, rescue horses that need the last act of kindness and be there for them in the end and put them down humanely without pain and suffering, it's, it's what, it's the kindest thing to do. It's not a fun job, but it is the kindest thing to do. She's gone. Sorry, gonna see here. Ready? Yep. Oh my goodness. Look at that rotation. Yeah. That's like coming through the bottom of her foot. Look at all of it. When you look at her grossly, her soul is further out than her shoe. Yeah. So her soul has completely prolapsed. And then you can see gas opacity. Um, but all of this is also really abnormal. It's like a high ring bone, but that's all proliferative bone. So this poor mare. Oh, that's so sad. It's so sad. So if you guys look right here, her soul is prolapsed further down than her the outside of her foot. So this bone, the end of this bone, is almost outside her foot. And when we when we get to that point, there's really nothing that you can do. You know, you can prevent additional rotation, but you can't really correct. The other thing that's really abnormal with this mare is all of this. So here's our coffin bone, um, P2 and P3. All of this frothy looking, abnormally shaped stuff back here is, it's called an osteophyte. It's when the bone experiences such severe inflammation over time that it lays down new bone in an attempt to um, bridge whatever's happening. And so this is evidence of years of an inflammatory process. So, uh, yeah, uh, like, I mean, so long. Yeah, her, her navicular bone is displaced probably by these bony fragments. Oh, and because this is enough of an answer that we don't want to ask her to do more, we probably won't do more diagnostics. And this is why getting to the bottom of what's happening with the horses you're rescuing. Yeah. Because if we didn't have this, we'd be like, oh, maybe she's got a bad abscess. We're going to put her through all this pain and suffering, finally get a vet out with an x-ray machine, and then find out that we can't fix it. So that's on intake. Try to get exactly what's going on with these critical horses. Otherwise, it's going to take up your time and resources and a lot of money from your organization and a lot of fans getting wrapped up in her story. And they're going to be like, why didn't you figure that out at the beginning? And the horse, like that is excruciating pain and it can't be fixed. So one of our fans sent a thing and they found her online June 10th. She was sold at the Sugar Creek auction in Ohio for $10. And so somebody bought her, brought her down here, sold her again. Horses in the slaughter pipeline, if the kill buyers know they can't ship them and make money, they will just take them to another auction, another auction, another auction, tell whether they die in the pipeline or somebody gets them that feels like they can do something with them. And thankfully in her case, we were there at the auction, but sadly there's nothing that we can do. And that's, that's heartbreaking.
much better, right? <laughs> you really like it. Oh, God, God. <laughs> Makes you wonder what happened. Yeah. My guess, she was in the pasture at one point. She got incredibly overweight to the point where she found her like this, and then. She came up lame, so they just sold her off, and she just flew down the... Yeah, but I mean, there's fractures in there, there's, you yeah. know, there's calcifications, there's arthritis, there's all kinds of stuff. I, you know, I, the founder I see, but to have advanced that quickly is just... It could have started at a very young age, and oh, yeah. it just, you know, started to get brittle, and she had breaks, because she was probably a workhorse. She was probably used by Amish, and they just worked her to this point. Once you put her down, are you okay? Yeah. Okay. Just make a sure. I got to work on it out. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. <laughs> this process is really hard. Yeah. yeah. She's been there a lot for her. Yeah. Make it up. Sorry. <laughs> You brought your hoof knife, right? Yeah. Like, did you look at her? No. She's bleeding. You can see it. It's already Oh, it is. It's a big abscess. No, no. it's not. Oh, it's, it's her coffin it's bone. No, her I'm coffin bone is starting to come through the bottom yeah. of her foot, kiddo. Um, so this is her coffin bone right here. here. Yeah. That's why it smells so bad is because it's that bone coming through the bottom of that sole. Yeah. Like that little mini. Yesterday, when we arrived at the sale, almost right away, we all noticed a Belgian that was just sucked up, dehydrated, skin and bones, and horrific foot conditions. I honestly didn't think she'd make it through the night, but the medical team did an awesome job rehydrating her and giving her some pain medication, and she did make it through the night. So I, for one, was feeling really hopeful. We all knew the hooves in the front were gonna be an issue and probably the ones in the back, but because she had such a, a warm, vibrant eye this morning when we all looked at her and she was standing and she was eating, we all hoped that um, the outcome would be much better. Unfortunately, after x-rays were taken, the rotation of the coffin bone, the drop sole, that this horse was never gonna get better and we had to let her go and it was really hard on a few of the people here, myself included, because even though it's the right thing to do, you can't help but be, feel bad for her, for what she had to endure probably most of her life. She was only between six and eight years old and horses don't get like that in a few days. Horses survive like that for years. And she had a very strong will to live, but you couldn't do it. The tide was turned. She was neglected for far too long, and that's why you need to try to save these horses before they end up going to auction, to auction, to auction, and ending up where you can't help them. So she's in green pastures now, eating and running, <laughs> and gaining weight without pain. <laughs> that's so awesome. For the love of the hoof is donating pizza for the crew and that's really awesome of them. So this is the best pizza I've ever had after a long, long day in his spot. So far we've gotten 
Um, we've no, gone through quite a few of them. We did all the yes. critical ones. Um, intake's been pretty good. It's um, way different than you know any other place because there's so much you can do here. Like you, have, you know, the vet on site, you have an X-ray machine. The whole intake process is very, very well detailed. If you have one of these and you're working with Mustangs, if you could have a, a stock that goes up really high that squeezes in, mm. it would work better and then like you could open it up and, and yeah. then take them out. So that is something that, um, and I'm glad that you get to see it used yes. in a way because it's, it sounds great. But sometimes, a lot of sometimes horses can be like, "Why are you putting me in here? I don't even like yeah, getting in a trailer." It's so a now small why? Space, mm -hmm. so I can see why they would be um, claustrophobic. But Mustangs. It's so much safer. But for for your average horse, you it's going to be like that. Um, so we want. And it is nice of you to join us. Yeah, yeah. So if right here, Diane is the scale. I dropped in. So we weigh everyone on intake, so we can see so if there is growth. Okay. Um, or if there's weight loss. Right. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. So sh squeeze down the front slowly. So come over here, so you can watch. So then over here, so Alicia, this is kind of like how, how we have it pulled up. So now the vet can have access to the horse's vein right here. So we're able to do everything we can for this little baby right there and the baby's squeezed in, it feels safe. If we were trying to do it back there, the baby would be flying around on the panels and now the vet can do everything. Oh, absolutely, it just makes it so much yes. nicer. Look at that padded in there, just put them in there. Just quieted them down as well. Mm -hmm. Because it's just holding them. Well, to uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so you guys gave them vaccines, Coggins, B12. Mm -hmm. And probi probiotics and antibiotics. Um, so right now we're doing a Coggins. Ready? Yep. But if we were, oh, hold on. I didn't get that shut. Okay, so if we were trying to do that in there, it would be, oh, it would be, yeah. it would be dangerous well, for our vet. It doing, would be, yeah. I mean, you're those. doing. That's yeah, what, that I mean, is exactly what you're doing. We're having to do this stuff, um, and then I'm having to bring the horse's face to the rail yeah. so that he can't do stuff. So they just microchipped him. Yep. Now he's going to get a five-way. Um, we do a five-way because it has the rhino, and from auction, a lot of horses do not. Well, I mean, they're exposed to everything, no. and if they're pregnant, they're going to lose their baby. Look at that cute little Cheech. Yes. He's like, I hate everybody right now. I'm just going to bite this. Bite it. It's cool. Um, it's definitely useful in certain situations, um, especially when you want to do intake like this. It's definitely extremely useful because, you know, rescues always get the wild, untamed ones. And so, I mean, they're pretty comfortable in there. You can tell they're not thrashing. They're, it's a, it's just like a thunder jacket for a dog, basically. Well, I'm really enjoying tonight. Um, we at Ponytails have just gotten a shoot like this, but it's, not put up yet so it's great to see it being used and operated and also just to listen to the vet and her using we don't have a, um, our own x-ray machine and just learning why it would be so great to have that on site and, and diagnose things immediately and so I'm just learning a ton I'm enjoying it uh, so this is our third intake here at horse plus and things seem to be going really smoothly today it's definitely a lot less horses than we've done intake on in the past, so that might be part of it. But there's a lot of people here and a lot going on still. Um, and I think it's going really good and we want an x-ray machine. <laughs> so this is one that we rescued from auction. He passed an initial evaluation and we've been trying and trying to get him better. And he, 
he just wasn't thriving. He wasn't gaining weight like he should. And then we had uh, Dr. Young do a more thorough right. and depth uh, evaluation of him. And it come to find out he has okay. like no teeth in the back. And it's something that we can't fix. He's not adoptable. He is older. So we are gonna be giving him the last act of kindness as well. We've spent the last two months trying to get him better, but his body is literally shutting down. So there's nothing we can do. If we had done a more thorough examination on intake, we would have made that decision way sooner. Just like with the little pony, once we did that really thorough dental exam, we're like, this is, we can't fix this. This horse, this pony has too much going on. So that is where we really just wanna urge you to, I mean, make a good system for intakes where you're actually really diving in. If it's a okay looking horse, you're probably gonna be fine. But if it's questionable, really dive in quickly to find out why. Because you don't want to prolong a horse's suffering if they're not adoptable and it's a chronic problem that you can't fix. How old is the horse? He's in his mid 20s to 30s. Yeah. He is old. He is old, but we tried. Yeah. Um, but it's something that with more of an education on our part of knowing what was going on with him, we would have made that decision sooner. Right. It is the end of the day. It is, yeah, eight o'clock at night. Um, we have pretty much done all the intake. Everything has gone through really clear. All the horses look great. Everybody settled in, except for obviously the screaming horse. Um, it's been a really great time to be a part of the Horse Heroes. The auction last night was fantastic. We were able to save 18 lives and it couldn't have been more rewarding. The intake today was just an eye opener and was so fantastic. And we're really, really happy to be horse heroes. The auction was really amazing. We saved 18 horses. It was hot, steamy and yucky, but we got them loaded and into the trailer to do um, intake assessment today. Everyone here is amazing horse heroes because medical team and veterinarian has processed 18 horses today. And that is with vaccines and x-rays and euthanasia. Pretty fast paced, exciting day. I am so proud to be a part of this horse hero team. It's been an amazing experience. The auction was very exciting to go to. I was very excited. I got to bid on my very first auction and we got to save 18 lives. And today we had the intake, which went great. It was very interesting to get to see how they do a large scale intake and get to see how they use their tilt and squeeze, which we really want one. And so that was really interesting to get to see that. And it was a great thing to be a part of and becoming a horse hero and helping these animals feel safe and get whatever treatment they need. The auction rescue is finally over. We rescued 18 precious lives. Then we had to get up early this morning and do their assessment, transport them to the shelter, and do their intake. It was really great being with all these different organizations. Ponytails was here and they rescued four. So there's a total of 22 horses rescued out of the slaughter pipeline, brought here to our facility, having our veterinarian and medical team intake all these animals and make sure that they're getting the best of care. But most of all, having these organizations here at boot camp over the last week has been amazing. They've learned so much and they've had so much hands-on learning, which I think is very important. The organizations, they're exhausted, but tomorrow morning, someone is walking away with $15,000. And it's gonna be super exciting to see who it is.